All right, we're going to take a look at the second half of section one of the unit nine notes, and we're going to take a, a deeper look at uh, the solubility curves. Now, solubility curves uh, are the graphs. They have temperature on the x-axis, and they have um, the amount of water. And in this case, it's generally 100 grams of water, which is going to be the solvent. Um, and then you have all these other lines on there. But, but anyway, what you're looking at is you're looking at how many grams of a substance, which is your solute. Remember, the solute is a substance that's being dissolved. And you're looking at um, how much will dissolve at various temperatures um, in 100 grams of water, which is the solvent, like I said. I found this video that really um, explains it quite well. So I want to share that with you. And we're going to take a look at this video before we move on. And let's take a look. Make sure I share my sound so you can hear the video. All right, let's take a look at this real quick. We have learned about the solubility rules in a different lesson. These rules help us predict whether or not a salt is soluble in water. For salts that are soluble in water, some are more soluble than others at a given temperature. In this lesson, we will learn about solubility curves, which is a graphical representation of the solubility of a certain salt over a temperature range. If we were to compare copper 2 sulfate and potassium sulfate, we will find that one is bright blue and the other is white. If we try to dissolve them in water of equal temperature, we will find that copper 2 sulfate is a lot more soluble than potassium sulfate. In other words, copper 2 sulfate has a higher solubility in water. This is actually a physical property of a substance, much like a substance melting point and boiling point. The solubility of a salt is usually measured as grams of salt per, let's say, 100 grams of water. Here is a challenge for you. Do you think solubility increases or decreases with temperature? Pause, think, and continue when you have an answer. The answer is that solubility usually increases with increasing temperature. So, if we dissolved copper 2 sulfate and potassium sulfate in hotter water, we will find that more of each salt is able to dissolve. This observation is only applicable to a solid dissolving in a liquid. We can measure how much of a given salt can dissolve in 100 grams of water at a certain temperature. We can plot solubility as a function of temperature to give a solubility curve. Here are solubility curves for copper 2 sulfate and potassium sulfate. We can see that for all temperatures, copper 2 sulfate is more soluble than potassium sulfate. From a solubility curve, it is also possible to find solubility at a certain temperature. Let's say we wanted to find the solubility of copper 2 sulfate at 90 degrees Celsius. Take a ruler and draw a vertical line starting at the x-axis at 90 degrees Celsius until it reaches the curve. Then, draw a horizontal line from the point on the curve until it reaches the y-axis. At 90 degrees Celsius, approximately 68 grams of copper 2 sulfate is soluble in 100 grams of water. To compare, at the same temperature, only 24 grams of potassium sulfate would be soluble in water. Using the provided graph, try to find the solubility of potassium sulfate at 60 degrees Celsius. Pause, try, and continue when ready. If your answer is around 18 grams of potassium sulfate per 100 grams of water, then you would be correct. When a maximum amount of a certain salt is fully dissolved, the resulting solution is known as a saturated solution. In a saturated solution, no more solute is able to dissolve. If we took the saturated solution and let it cool, it would become a supersaturated solution. This means that there is more solute 
than the maximum amount able to dissolve. When this happens, some of the solute may crystallize or come out of solution. Okay, so let's go back to the notes and we'll go over the information and some of the examples. Let me get it to share. There we go. All right. So hopefully shed, that shed a little bit of light on um, these solubility curves for you. I think she did a good job at explaining and then showing you how to read them. All right, so let's take a look at this one. You can see that there are several different lines on them for the several different uh, salts or substances or solutes, whatever you want to call, uh, on there that you could read. Um, I know it looks really complicated, but when you're asked for the solubility of something, you just find the line you need and just look at that one line. We'll do some examples in a minute. So this graph, uh, they, vary, they usually just have the 100 grams of water on the y-axis, but just keep in mind that if you had 200 grams of water, um, you would just double the solute value at a given temperature. So for example, let's take a look at, let me pick something easy here. Um, I'm trying to see, sodium's hard to, sodium chloride's hard to see. Um, I guess we can look at potassium chloride here, this line. Um, so if we look at 60 degrees, you can see potassium chloride is right there. Um, it's almost halfway between the 40 and the 50 mark. Okay, so let's just, for, just for ease, let's just say 45. Okay, it's a little high but um, we're gonna say 45 just for the ease of the math. So um, 45 grams uh, will dissolve in 100 grams of water. Now, we just said, what if you have 200 grams of water? Well, you just double the 45 grams, okay? If 45 grams will dissolve in 100 grams of water, 90 grams should dissolve in 200 grams of water. Okay, so that's how you look at it. Um, we're gonna do some examples, so we'll, I don't wanna get into that just yet. But just remember, um, you have different phases. We've talked about phases. So solids, for example, let's say you're throwing some crystalline um, com, uh, solute into the water. And um, they're going to have a higher solubility as you increase the temperature. So the higher the temperature, the more <clears throat> soluble or the faster it'll dissolve. For example, like this one right here, you see this line is a very positive slope. Um, so that would be the higher solubility at higher temperatures. Gases, on the other hand, um, have a higher sol uh, solubility at lower temperatures. So they have a more, a, a smaller slope. Not that sodium chloride is um, a gas, but just to show when we talk about a slope that's not as high, that would be an example um, right here of the sodium chloride. Even the potassium chloride doesn't have the slope uh, <clears throat> of this one right here. All right, so let's move on to some examples. Um, and then also before, I guess before we get to the examples, we have to look at what we mean by saturated, unsaturated, and supersaturated. If you have a saturated solution, it means that you've reached that equilibrium where you can't put any more solute in because it won't dissolve. It'll just, you know, fall out of solution and, and sink to the bottom of the beaker, okay? Um, your solvent has as much solute in it as it can take that it will dissolve. Okay, saturated, that's what that means. Unsaturated means that you put some solute in, but you're less than the maximum amount of solute that you can put in it. So in other words, you can keep putting some of the uh, solute in it and it will continue to dissolve until it reaches the saturation point. So this is below saturation point, which means you don't have as much in there as it can take, okay? Supersaturated means that you've got more than a maximum amount of solute that it's capable of being dissolved at a given temperature. Okay, generally what happens is it looks like it dissolves, but as it sits there, you're gonna see it falling out of solution. It's gonna build up on the bottom of the beaker. Okay, and um, the way we look at these on a curve, um, you're looking at the lines, remember we saw all the lines. So if, if you're looking at a temperature, uh, and it falls on the line here, then you know it's saturated. That's the number of grams that will dissolve fully at that temperature in 100 grams of water. 
Now, if you find yourself way up here above the line, then you're at a super saturated point. You're above the maximum amount. If you find yourself below the line, then you're at an at unsaturated point, which means there's not, you know, you don't have the maximum amount that can dissolve. Okay, so it's un, you know, unsaturated it's below that point. And I have a video here. We're not going to watch that. You can go back and watch it if you want. It's just a, a video that shows you how to read the graph and determine saturated, unsaturated, and supersaturated. All right, but we're going to take a look at this one. We're going to look at um, some specific examples. And again, keep in mind right here where we have one milliliter of water is equal to one gram of water because you're going to see me interchange the the grams, the milliliters, and I wanted to do that because it depends on what source you're looking at this stuff at. Sometimes it will show it as milliliters, sometimes as grams. All right, so let's look at this first one. Let me see if I can get my pen out if it'll let me write. That'll make it a little bit easier for y'all to see these things. Annotate. All right, move this up a little bit. So we are looking at KNO3. So here we have the KNO3 line right here. So that's the one we're looking at. I'm going to ignore all the other ones. And they want to know how many grams are soluble at 70 degrees and 100 grams of water. So let's find our 70 degree point right here. And remember in the video we just watched, she said use a ruler and draw a line. Well, we're going to do it. I don't have a ruler, so we're just going to try to do it this way. So you can see at 70 degrees, we're looking at about 130 grams of KNO3 that will dissolve in the water. Now, we said that that was 130 for this first one. 130 grams will dissolve at 70 degrees. Now, what if we only have 50 grams of water? How are we going to figure that? Because remember, this isn't 100 grams of water. Remember how I said if you had 200 grams of water, you just double the amount. In this case, you have half the amount of water because 50 is half of 100. So you're just going to take half of 130, which is going to give you 65 grams. Okay. So if you have 50 grams of water, 65 grams of the KNO3 will dissolve. If you have 100 grams of water, 130 grams will dissolve. Okay, and that's how you look at these graphs. All right, let's take a look at our next one. How many grams of NaNO3? So here we're looking at this one. Okay, are soluble at 80 degrees and 100 milliliters. Let's find our 80 degree mark. There's 80. We are going to draw a line. So we're looking at this point here. I know this is not a straight line. <laughs> Terrible, but close enough. So we are looking at what? About 143, I would say. About 143 grams. It's not quite halfway between. Halfway would be 145. So about 143 grams of NaO, uh, NaNO3 will dissolve at 80 degrees and 100 milliliters of water. Okay, now look what it says for the second part of the question. How many grams are going to dissolve in 200? Okay, well, this is per 100 grams of water. So if this is 143 per 100 grams of water, and now we've doubled the water amount. So what do we got to do? We got to double 143. Now we're going to multiply. All right, so you're going to end up with 286 grams of NaO. NaNO3 will dissolve in 200 milliliters of water. Remember, milliliters and grams for water are the same thing. One, one milliliter of water is equal to one gram. So even though I'm saying milliliter here and this is grams, it's the same, same amount. All right, how many grams of NH4Cl? So NH4Cl is right here. We're looking at this line. Are soluble at 90 degrees. There's our 90. So you're going to draw a line up until it intersects. And they want to know how much at 100 grams. Of course, we're dealing with 100, so we don't have to do anything to our number once we figure it out. So just draw that right on over. And 
we are looking at 70 grams for this one. Okay, 70 grams of NH4Cl will dissolve in 100 grams of water. All right, and our last one asks, which compound is most soluble? Remember we said, well, if you look, basically the, uh, generally the uh, steepest slope, but in this case, I kind of look at your graph there. You've got one with a steep slope. Um, and this one right here, at lower temperatures, see we're at 10 degrees and 20 degrees and it's way up here. Okay, so you can get a lot more of your potassium iodide there to dissolve in lower temperatures um, than these other guys here. See, we're, look how low we're are. If we're looking at all these, you're only going to get up to about 90 something. And that's not, that's not all of them. That's this one right here. Um, this one's about a little over 70. Oh, that's at zero, I guess. I should be moving over here to the 10, but you, you see what I mean. So for this one, we're looking at potassium iodide. All right, let's move on to our next slide. I guess I needed to clear that slide first. Hold on a second. Clear. All right. All right, so now we need to, to do some examples where you're trying to figure out if you have a saturated solution, an unsaturated solution, or a super saturated solution. Remember what we said. I'm going to draw a little graph down here. When you have your line, I'm going to change colors. Let's see, let's go to blue. If it's on the line, anywhere on the line, okay, that means it's saturated. All right, if you are above the line, anywhere above the line would be super saturated. All right, and then if you, let's see what color, let's go with green. If you are below the line anywhere, that's gonna be unsaturated. Okay. So the first one says, we're looking at 70 grams of NaO3. So find NaO3, we're looking at this line right here. All right, find 70 grams. Uh, well, actually, I guess we should look at this. Let's look at the temperature too. So at 30 degrees, we're looking at 30 degrees. Look at where we're at, at 30 degrees. We're looking at about 95-ish. But they say we only have 70 grams. So if we're at 70 grams, we're down here. We're below the line. Okay, so if we're below the line, Remember, that's unsaturated. All right, so if we have 100 grams of water that only has 70 grams of NaNO3, we haven't reached the saturation point yet. We're, we're below it, okay, so which means that we could actually add some more and it would still dissolve. But at that point, we're unsaturated. All right, let's look at the next one. And I've done erase the other part. Well, hopefully y'all remember. Um, so this one, we're looking at NH4Cl, so NH4, where is it? There it is. We're looking at this line right here. All right, and we're at 50 degrees, so fine, 50 degrees. At 50 degrees, we have about 50 grams that will uh, make it saturated. But look, well, we do have 50, so 50 and 50. So for this one, it is saturated because it's right on the line. Okay, so we've, we've meet, met the maximum amount and that's how much is in the solution and all of it should have dissolved. All right, and our last one, potassium chloride, where's that right here? All right, so at five degrees, so we're down here between the zero and the 10. So about right there, it's just barely below the 30 mark. 
Hold on, let me take a look and see. Um, okay, so we have, what does it say we have? We have 45 grams. All right, well, look where we're at on the line. We're right at the 30, but they say we have this much. All right, so we are above uh, the maximum amount that will dissolve. So in this case, we are at the supersaturated point. All right, there's too much in there. What's going to happen is it's going to precipitate out, crystallize. You're going to see the little crystals sinking to the bottom of the beaker because it just can't all dissolve. All right, so that's how you read the graph when you're trying to determine saturated, unsaturated, or supersaturated. All right, uh, I think I showed you this before, but just to take a look again, sometimes they'll throw some gases in the mix. So the solid lines indicate solids. And then if you see the um, dotted lines, you can also figure solubility for gases as well. And remember how we said solids tend to, their solubility tends to increase with temperature. Take a look at our gas lines. Look at what they're doing. We said gases, they, they you know, they're going to have a, a lower slope. They don't increase with temperature. Remember, pressure is the one that generally affects the solubility of gases more than the temperature. All right, let's take a look at our text for understanding here. All right, so if the solubility of NaCl, so we're looking at NaCl, this line right here, uh, at 25 degrees, so 25 is about right here because halfway would be 30. So we're looking at this one. That's 25 degrees Celsius. And you're going to see that they tell you it's about 36.2 grams per 100. And like I said, we're still looking at 100. So that's about right. That's right below the 40 mark there. So about 36.2. They want to know what the mass of NaCl that can be dissolved if you have only 50 grams of water. So remember, if it's 36.2 grams in 100 grams of water, um, how much will be will it be in 50 grams? Now, 50 is half of 100. So really, you're just dividing the 36.2 in half. Okay, so that's going to be 18.1. Okay, 36.2 divided by 2, or halving it, will give you 18.1. So there's your answer for that one. You could also look at the chart too, I guess. Well, not really, because this is in 100. You would have to do what I just did to figure that out. Like I said, this is all generally always in 100 grams. So like I said, if you half the amount of water you have, you half the amount of solute. If you double the amount of water you have, then you're going to double the solute amount. OK, let's look at this. Which salt solubility in water is least affected by temperature? OK, so in other words, look at your slopes. Which one doesn't really change that much as the temperature increases? OK, and if you look at this one right here, it's pretty flat line. I mean, it increases a little bit. So it's going to be your sodium chloride. <clears throat> the answer is um, the bottom one there, which I can't get to because that thing's in the way. But anyway, it's NaCl. Okay, omitted number eight. Oops, I didn't want to go that far. All right, um, let's look at this one. So we heated a solution. We have 100 milliliters of water. Okay, so, uh, and we're adding the potassium chloride crystals until no more would dissolve. So he's trying to saturate it. Um, she capped the, the solution and let it set on the lab bench. And after several hours, she noted it had become cloudy. And she started getting some solid stuff settling at the bottom of the flask. So what best describes what happened here? They explained this in the video I showed, but let's take a look at her answers. As the solution cooled, evaporation of water increased. Okay, she capped it. Okay, so... Um, the water's not really going anywhere. It's still in the beaker, so let's kind of cross that one off. Water molecules trapped with the uh, potassium chloride crystals were released. Um, again, she's capped it. She's put a cap on it. These water molecules aren't going anywhere. 
At lower temperatures, the solubility of the KCl decreased and recrystallization formed. And then the last one is at increased temperatures, solubility of KCl increased and remained too high. No, um, it's not going to remain high after cooling. Okay, so here's your correct answer. We said that, remember, you can heat up the substances, solubility increases as temperature increases, and then as it cools, of course, it's going to you know, recrystallize and fall out of solution. So letter C is your answer. All right, let's take a look at how you would read this graph. All right, this question says, using the chart above, which of these combinations will probably form a precipitate? So they've given you a chart here. Uh, it tells you that anything with an I would be nearly insoluble. Uh, if you have SS, it means slightly soluble. Uh, just one S means that it is soluble, and N means um, not isolated. Uh, I don't think we have to worry about that one. But anyway, so we're looking for <clears throat> if it's going to form a precipitate, it's not going to be the, the solubility is going to be lower. Okay, so let's look at these combinations and see what we get. So we have ammonium chloride. Okay, so this one right here, that's an S. We have barium bromide. Okay, right here, that also has an S. So, so far we've got soluble substances. Calcium chromate. So we have calcium, we got to find the chromate right here. That one also has an S, so soluble. And then we have copper two carbonate right here. And look, we have our I. And I means nearly insoluble. So this will be the one, the copper two uh, carbonate is going to be the one that's going to form that precipitate, which means you're going to get the solid crystals forming in solution because it's just not going to dissolve. Okay. That was the last slide. Okay, guys, so we won't go into dilutions yet. All right, hopefully that helped your understanding of uh, solubility curves. Let me know if you have any questions in class or you can email me. Have a great day.